What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Our Gaming Adventures. I'm Phoebe, and as you can tell today, Gavin is not with me. That's okay. Gavin and I sometimes will play different games on our own. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Phoebe, it's Our Gaming Adventures. It's a husband and wife gaming channel. Why isn't he here? Well, one, he's at work. And two, I wanted to start Spyro the Dragon for me. Spyro the Dragon has a very personal connection with me. Um, and before we get further into this video, um, here's a small trigger warning of while I'm playing this game series of Spyro the Dragon, the original, I will be talking about some of my personal life stories. Um, I will be talking about um, my father who died of cancer this year. Again, this is just going to be a small trigger warning because I will be talking about mental health, things that I have experienced such as insomnia. PTSD, depression. I will also be talking about my father a lot in the Spyro the Dragon um, series, kind of the cancer journey that uh, he went through and that I experienced being um, his daughter. So I just wanted to get that out of the way now. Really this series is going to be me diving in and letting you all know a little bit more of me. So thank you for joining and let's watch this lovely remastered scene. It's been peaceful here in the Five Worlds, or is it six? <laughs> For a dragon's age, we now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Ganoth character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That does it! Oh my gosh. So the adventure begins. All right, I will get started into talking a little bit more about why Spyro is so special to me after we release this dragon. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free 10 dragons in the artisan world, then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Spyro. I don't know if shh, that fairy was officially Zoe in um, the original Spyro the Dragon. I am unaware. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Spyro is kind of just sliding here. For those of you that have seen any of our gaming adventures uh, videos, you know that I am Phoebe and I game with my husband, Gavin. This is the first series that I'm taking for myself personally to game with you guys. And the purpose of why we named it Our Gaming Adventures is that um, in the long run, we knew that it wasn't just our gaming adventures, meaning Gavin and I's gaming adventures. While yes, that is the main heart of it, the other half of that heart is that we wanted to share our gaming experiences, whether it be me and a friend gaming, whether it be me and Gavin gaming, whether it be Gavin and one of his friends gaming, or just us doing solo, um, solo playthroughs like this, we wanted to share that with you. So the other half of our gaming adventures is to play with a community of you. Um, because like Gavin and I have said in our previous videos is that we wouldn't be here without you all. Spyro the Dragon, I grew up on as many 90s and early 2000s um, kids of that era also grew up on. I think that the original PlayStation 1 games had more than 11 million sales. I'm not sure if that was just the original Spyro the Dragon here or if it was all three original PlayStation 1 games, but I know that 
it was kind of a slow takeoff and then they eventually had like 11 million sales. My dad actually got me Ripto's Rage, which is the second um, Spyro the Dragon game. And um, I actually had number two and three Ripto's Rage and Year, uh, Year of the Dragon um, before I ever had Spyro the Dragon 1. I actually grew up just playing 2 and 3 for years, and then when I think I was a preteen, that's when... <laughs> Why is he sliding like that? Um, <laughs> this is also uh, my first time playing Spyro the Dragon with an Xbox controller and on a PC. Um, I grew up playing the original PlayStation 1 games on my dad's PlayStation 2. Again, the second and third versions of that game. And don't mind me, I'm just running around getting gems in this world, kind of while I'm uh, telling you all um, kind of a, this little backstory. But I was between the ages of 12 and 16, well I think it was before I could drive, when um, I realized that there was a third, meaning this game, the first PlayStation 1 game, and we went to our local vintage stock, which is a trade-in store that you know, specializes in games, comics. And I know that my dad and I were like on the hunt for a PlayStation 1 disc. This was before any talk of the Reignited trilogy, which is what we are playing now. We were on the hunt for the first game. We had to go like to three different vintage stock locations or three different little store locations to be able to find the PlayStation 1 disc of the original Spyro the Dragon. And let me tell you, growing up from the ages of like five to 12 playing Ripto's Rage and Year of the Dragon, I got that altered experience. And when I finally received Spyro the Dragon PlayStation 1, I was, I was kind of like selfishly like anticlimactic. I was like, well, this one wasn't, this one isn't as cool to me as the other two are. And it's because it was the first one. And it's something at the time that I didn't appreciate. Where's yes, he has an easel, North? I love it. I'll torch it. Keep your horns on, Spyro! You have much to learn first. Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? Sparks. Uh... His name is Sparks, Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. <laughs> now, Sparks turns blue if Spyro gets hit once, and then turns green if Spyro gets hit again and then disappears if Spyro gets hit for the third time. And if Sparks is gone and Spyro gets hurt, that is when we officially die. So Sparks caters to the game as a good three, three heart or three health life event. I'm pretty sure there was a pattern to this. Ooh. <laughs> or maybe we just have to, yeah, light all. Hop, skip, and a jump. So there's sunny light. I'm gonna go around exploring the artisan's world a little bit more. You know, I, I was taking it for granted and I was a little bit selfish and I was like, oh, this, this is kind of lame. But now looking back on it, um, for those of you who don't know, I am a 25 year old now. And like I said at the beginning of this video, um, 2022 this year, my father passed away in January. It was It is currently July of 2022. And um, to say the least, this year has definitely been just full of grief. But before I get into that, um, playing the first Spyro the Dragon, I kind of just want to dive into the actual game itself. And what I am hoping to do on this channel is one, to play it when I want. I don't want this gaming series, any of my Spyro gaming playthroughs that I do, to be draining in the sense that I feel like I have to finish them for the channel. I want to do them for me. Argus. Cool flash. Do that again. The artisan's boss is through a portal in the dragon mouth, but you are not yet ready, Spyro. First, you must complete one of the other artisan lands. Yes, I have to unlock other levels, which I have kind of been dilly-dallying around to kind of talk, but we can play and talk at the same time. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. I'm 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 still still a noob. Gavin and I have had this channel for less than a year. Hey, Spyro! Press the jump button twice to glide. And and don't be afraid. Afraid? 
Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. Same. Oh! That. <laughs> Same. Same Spyro. <laughs> Alright. Um, and before I forget, I want to talk about the beginning scene of the Spyro the Dragon scene. Um, because I think the original PlayStation 1, due to the limited graphics, but for any of you that have seen the PlayStation 1 uh, versions of Spyro the Dragons, to me, growing up, the graphics were so beautiful. And looking at it from a graphics standpoint, and now that I'm an artist standpoint, I don't know much about game development and game coding, but the art and the graphics of the original PlayStation 1 Spyro games, to me personally, felt like a true like piece of art like the game as a playstation one version was so in detail now i mean looking back compared to the reignited re remastered trilogy here obviously it's not as clean or smooth but the world um all the different worlds were amazing with the art and the playstation one graphics all the different characters um, the fact that they went with different characters in all the different worlds was also amazing um, the models the environments I just I you know anyone who played the PlayStation 1 games like if you have played Spyro please let me know down in the comments but anyone who played the PlayStation 1 Spyro games like you know like it was a beautiful game as I run into doors and woods um, <laughs> Like I was saying earlier, Spyro the Dragon, this one, is a game that I think I've only played through the entirety of the game once. While with Ripto's Rage and Year of the Dragon, I cannot tell you how many times I have played through both of those. And what I'm hoping to do on the channel is play through the entirety of Spyro the Dragon as the remastered version. And then maybe if I could save up some money to get some, um, I don't know, some HDMI cords that can translate or a capture card that can translate into our old PlayStation 2, because I still have my dad's and I's PlayStation 2. Um, I would love to play the original Ripto Ripto's Rage and Year of the Dragon here on the channel. So if you'd like to see that, please let me know down in the comments and just let me know um, what your experience with Spyro the Dragon has been, whether you played the games, whether you watched other people play the games, whether you grew up on the games like I did. But here we are in the first level. It's, it's honestly just so nice. But anyway, what I was saying, sorry, I, I get off track a lot if you haven't been able to tell. <laughs> I am gonna jump around. So thank you for bearing with me and um, <laughs> rescued Gavin. Too bad he's not here. <laughs> Watch the dragonfly, Spyro. His color indicates his power. Thank you, when Gavin. When he eats butterflies, he stays strong, like me. Uh, sure. <laughs> I love that. I think Gavin would also appreciate that. I miss Jim Stanley. Um, but like I said, me playing Spyro the Dragon, it's very much I run around a lot, and I enjoy the scenery, and... Um, if you've seen any of our other gaming, you know I'm not a professional gamer, but I game to have fun, and that's the goal. I mean, that's another reason Gavin and I started our gaming adventures, is that, you know, he has a lot more, Gavin has a lot more gaming experience when it comes to first-person games and first-person shooters and um, very much more adult storylines. While growing up, I played Spyro the Dragon, Crash Bandicoot, um... Lego games, a lot of third person, like I loved the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, 101 Dalmatian games. I like uh, obsessively played those as much as I played Spyro. Same thing with Crash, but Crash was a little different in that I raged. After you've freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. Thank but you. first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya! <laughs> so that reminded me, like, Spyro's sass. Like, in the first PlayStation 1 game, the voice actor, and if you have... And I'll, I'll place some images, like, side comparison of the graphics, and also the voice actor of the first game. I'm not quite sure who it was, but it was very much more 
nasally. Um, Spyro was very much more nasally. And I think that in the original Spyro the Dragon game, number one of the trilogy, he was also a little bit more sassy and a little bit more immature. And we kind of see his character um, become a little bit kinder. But I, I always have loved Spyro. Lindar. When you free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. But the original Nasty Nork opening, um, I love that they kept it true to the lines and to, true to the original story. But it is different than the original PlayStation 1 Insomniac Games opening with Nasty Nork to where they didn't have the slow zoom out of the TV like the Reignited Trilogy did. And then just like seeing, whoa, just like seeing um, how <laughs> the Elder Dragons and the art on them, like that's what I think is always funny about the original trilogy is that the art and how angular the Elder Dragons looked in comparison, same thing with Hunter, the cat, <laughs> the cheetah, or uh, cougar, or I don't think I've ever confirmed. I've always just ca called him Hunter. Like, it was so triangular and angular because it was the PlayStation 1 character graphics. But just seeing the Elder Dragons compared to what they are now, it's so amazing how much Toys for Bob and the, um, the developers of the Reignited Trilogy took the same love for the development and went more art based because this was a very beautiful game to like to begin with i think it defines my aesthetic as well um sorry i know that there's ways to get up there because i know that there is gyms up there i'm not sure if we can do that on the first playthrough or if we have to learn how to hover um, before we do that, we also have to find a key for this. What Gavin and I need to work on is like talking to you all more because we do want to get to know all of you more because we want to be here without you. And we are thankful for those of you that have subscribed. We're about to hit 450 subscribers and we are super thankful for all of you. So thank you. Um, oh yes, this is how, this is how I get up here. Okay. Um, oh, dragon. Spyro, my friend. How about a hint on space, gliding? Some of them. You bet! For the longest glide, press the jump button at the top of your jump, and try pressing the action button to drop down mid-flight. Like I was saying, I have more experience with, um, with number two and three, and in the second and third games, Hunter is the one that teaches Spyro to jump and glide, and and stuff and I really just love Hunter as a character but I'm not sure if I don't think he's in this first game um, which was another reason like me being a teenager I was like well that's lame Hunter's not even in this game like I was very much just like you know a teenager <laughs> just this whole trilogy besides me just growing up on it and literally obsessing over it and this is the game that I've literally spent the most hours of my life playing uh, two and three uh, of most of my childhood it, it was my comfort um, is that my dad and I played Spyro together and, and it was always a one player game but well, some of my core memories and it was over several days in my childhood or it's like when I was like eight and nine and we would play the PlayStation 2 together and I you know we um, in the second or third Spyro game there are two skateboarding levels and for those of you that are familiar with Spyro oh, know of these two skateboarding levels and those two skateboarding levels are very meaningful especially the second one um are very meaningful to me and the fact that um oh, i almost had him and the fact that my dad and i would play together on hot summer days like specifically summer days and i remember that we would because spyro the dragon is a one-player game we would play the skateboarding levels together and sorry it's 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 hard to talk about because it's still fresh but i want i want to share i want to share it with you um 
we would play those skateboarding levels as kind of a competition. Um, that big skateboarding hidden level um, that once you finish it and finish the time trials and get the orbs or the dragon eggs. Um, my dad and I would play this competition together of like, okay, like here's the controller. Let's see what high score you can get. And then, you know, he would play and then I would play and we would do all these trips, these tricks, and we would just try to beat each other's high scores. And we would do that for hours. Um, and specifically on summer days when it was too hot to go outside. And I remember part of that is that if any of you ever remember the popsicle scribblers, they were literally like multicolored um, crown or crayon. Don't make fun of the way I say crown. This is a core memory. Be nice to me. Um, <laughs> crown um, shaped popsicles that had like three different flavors. And I remember eating like a whole box of those with dad, like to the point where my stomach would hurt. Um, but we would do that. And specifically like when I was between the ages of eight and 10, like during the summers and when dad would have a day off and my mom would be working or it was a weekend and my mom would be doing something else or going out um, to get groceries or something. Like my dad and I would spend an hour or two like just playing that hidden skateboard level. And that is a level that I haven't played since my dad's passed. And I um, wanted to play on the channel as sort of to share my love for Spyro the Dragon and my memories with my dad um, with all of you. So thank you for being here and thank you for listening to me ramble. But um, it's one of my favorite childhood memories is playing that secret level of Spyro, the skateboarding level, and just trying to beat each other's high scores with him. Yeah, I miss him a lot, and it's bringing up a lot of um, emotions, but I, but I'm glad I'm sharing it. Um, I, I will, as I play Spyro the Dragon, I will talk about my dad more um, when I feel ready, but um, as I was saying earlier, I don't I, I do want to play like all the original PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 Spyro games on this channel with all of you. I just don't want it to turn into something where I feel like I have to get it done and I have to schedule them and I have to post them. So, you know, if you're here in five years and, I, and I've finished this game, like, thank you for being here. But if you're here with me now, um, please be patient with me because it's only been, you know, my dad died January 30th. It's, you know, today is... July 14th of the same year. So um, while I do love Spyro, I, I, I want to keep this true for me and share this experience with you. Um, but I don't want it to be a situation where I feel like I have to finish the game and I have to upload it because I, I really do want to enjoy Spyro the way I used to and the way that I just run around. And obviously I've been making circles while I'm rambling. So um, if you want to watch the series just to get to know me and a little bit more about Gavin and I, like I'm just going to be talking and rambling while I play. Um, I'm just making sure that I got all of the gems. I can also check. So I have four out of four dragon dragons, one egg. I am missing some gems for this level. Let's see. Uh, it might be the key. I don't think I found the key. Um, Nothing here yet. Okay. Now, am I going to try to finish Spyro the Dragon, um, the original one here, remastered 100% with you all? Yes. Um, with the other games in the future, not sure yet. I'm just going to take it day by day. I've been in therapy this year, and that's also helped a lot with the grieving process. Yes, I need to find the key to you, and then I think we can leave this level. Um, if you are in a similar situation situation i highly recommend therapy for those of you that are open to it because genuinely without it um it has been really hard um grieving in general with therapy so um without it i'd be a total total emotional wreck like it, it, it has helped me have a lot of realizations it has helped me process a lot of the big emotions that I've been feeling and big just anger and sadness and denial and grief and and, I'm, I'm, and one thing that people don't talk about, I feel, in America 
and that's kind of taboo is their um, experience with mental health and their experience with watching people you love pass away um, due to cancer. And I know that um, my dad was diagnosed with colon cancer at the age of 46 and he actually had testicular cancer at 21 and the reason <laughs> um, the reason that he passed away at 51 is because he had several cancer mutations um, that wasn't just regular colon cancer um, and doctors think that um, the only reason that he passed away and that the cancer got as bad as it did is due to the radiation that he endured when he was 21 and got rid of the testicular cancer. Um, so that also sucks. But I also, one, it's fresh. Um, this is all very fresh. Um, it hurts. Oh yes, here's some gems. Um, it hurts to talk about, but I also want to bring awareness to it. Um, and that's why I also just want to have a precursor to um, telling you that with this series, I am going to be talking a lot about the cancer when I do feel like it. And I am going to be talking a lot about me and my personal mental health journey and my personal growth. Um, so if you um, get triggered by cancer the way that I do, I definitely understand if you click off, but I'm, I'm thankful for those of you that are here. Um, because that's one thing that's been very triggering since he has um, passed away is that, you know, cancer ads and um, cancer fundraisers and just hearing the word cancer. Um, all right, we got this level complete. We can now leave this level. Um, but, you know, I want this to be a safe space for us. Like, this is going to be our safe space um, playing the Spy of the Dragon with me. So thank you for joining this journey. And please feel free to share any of your experiences, you know, or any of your thoughts. Um, but I just want this to be a very much warm and loving playthrough with me. Um, I, I'm not going to tolerate any mental health slander, any... Um, negative negativity in the comments like I'm not I'm not so um, thank you for understanding that and thank you for being here I know that a lot of this first video has been me sort of rambling and um, I hope you understand that uh, even if the rambling is a little hard to listen to it, it you know this is me being vulnerable and um, just thank you for your patience and your kindness and I am going to be recording more um, and releasing more. But here is episode one of my playthrough of Spyro the Dragon. And going forth in the series, you're going to be hearing a lot more about me. And, you know, I'll talk about Gavin and I. I'll talk about how we've grown together in our relationship. But this this series is like a safe space for us. It's our gaming adventures, you and me. So thank you for being here. And um, let's, let's have this playthrough be really positive. Um, but thank you for being here. I'm Phoebe of our gaming adventures and I look forward to playing Spyro the Dragon with you all. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Aw, Sparks. Sparks is the cursor? Ah, oh, my heart. Sparks is the cursor. I love it. It's the mouth.